Hey folks, good morning, or at least it is good morning for me. And uh, this is Max from 100 Things to Do with Writer Products. Um, and today I'm going to walk you through setting up an OpenShift cluster on Google Cloud. I'm going to use Google Cloud for the simple fact that I have a couple of um, Google Cloud um, credits lying around. Um, I could do the same thing with Azure or AWS or um, OpenStack or whatever. Um, and I, I might actually do so in the future just to show you the, the subtle differences between the major public clouds um, because it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, but today we're going to do Google Cloud and OpenShift. Um, I might be doing, I will be doing Ansible and Setlight related videos in the future. Again, don't worry about that if you're more interested in that. Um, you know, we'll have to sit this one out because this one is going to be about OpenShift and Ansible and Setlight will be back in the future. So the first thing that we need to do before we actually deploy OpenShift on top of Google Cloud is make sure Google Cloud is actually able to, um, for us to, to install OpenShift um, onto. And we do that by creating a project on Google Cloud first. And this project is there is then basically the namespace that we that we install OpenShift into. Uh, the way we do that is by running the Google Cloud CLI and give it a parameter. Um, is it running now? I think so. Um, give it a parameter um, project. So G Cloud project create and set as default because I, you know otherwise you have to switch to it manually. Um, and then we're going to give it the name of my project. I put the name of my project into a variable. It makes it a little easier. Um, to do this, um, the project is going to be called OpenShift-100 things. Um, this is going to take a while, so I might hit pause for a minute or two, because otherwise you're going to have me here talking um, in front of an empty screen. So let me hit pause. Ah, there we go. So that takes about um, two to three minutes. I'm not really sure why this takes so long, but you know it's done now, so we can move on. Now, before we can actually um, deploy things into this project. We need to make sure this project is actually connected to my billing account. Um, so let me do that right now. We can do that with the CLI as well. This should be fairly quick. And when, there we go. And I see I need to blur that out when I'm editing this video. And then after we actually um, attach this to my billing account, I can enable all of the APIs we're going to need during OpenShift deployment. So um, I'm using Fish Shell here, so this might actually look a little different when you need to do this in Bash. Bash doesn't know of the end statement, for example. So I think in Bash it's done. Um, but it doesn't really matter that much. It's um, fairly similar. We're going to loop over a list of APIs that we want to enable, and we're going to um, G Cloud services enable that API. <coughs> Excuse me. When this is done, this should be fairly quick as well. Um, we can move on to the next step, which is going to be enabling a DNS zone in Google. And don't worry that my head is in front of the list of APIs. Don't worry about that. Um, I'll post the, the the shell script snippets in uh, in in show notes. So that is done. Now let me hit. Um, let me clear my screen for a second so we can actually start fresh. Um, all the APIs that I need to install OpenShift are enabled now, so I can add a DNS zone to my project, which is a requirement as well, because, you know, um, we need to be able to reach OpenShift through DNS. So I'm going to run this command. This is going to create a, a managed zone in my, my project in Google Cloud for gcpa.nontonight.com. I'm going to call it my demo zone, and this should be fairly quick, and I hope I did the command right. Um, when this is done, um, I'm going to go offline for a second. There we go. And actually add the NS records that go with this subzone to my um, root domain uh, hoster. So um, there's actually a delegation of this zone to Google actually works. Um, but I'll do that without showing you guys because it's kind of uninteresting. Then next thing we need to do is create a, a service account that um, we're going to use to install OpenShift as well. So we're going to run this command. It's going to create a service account called initial OCP SA with the description of initial SA for OpenShift and the display name of OCP SA. I'm going to run that, create a service account for me. Then uh, kind of an important step, this service account needs to have specific permissions within my project. Um, I'm going to use a, a role to, uh, I'm going to assign a role to this service account called owner. If you do this for real in production environment, you probably don't want to use the owner role. Um, in the OpenShift documentation, we actually describe which permissions you should assign. But for simplicity's sake, I'm going to use um, role owner here. So I'm going to run the next command. I'm going to paste that in here. I hope I have done all of the typing right here again. I'm going to assign a role to that service again. Actually, 
perfect, works perfectly. And then finally, what I need to do is download um, a JSON file containing a key that I'm going to use to authenticate as the service account back to um, Google Cloud again. So that's the final thing I'm going to do here. I'm going to hit that. Is that the right one? Yeah, that's the right one. I'm going to hit this command. It's going to be pretty quick. Now, there are two more things I need to do at this point. First of all, I'm going to need to go into the control panel of my, my domain and my DNS hoster and add um, the delegation records to the zone I just added to um, this project. That's one thing. I'm going to do that offline for a bit. And the second thing I need to do is because I'm doing this in a personal account and I don't have an enterprise agreement with Google or whatever, um, I will need to request additional quota for a couple of things. Um, I'll show that in a second. So here we are on the page that Google gives you to check all the quota that are assigned to you. Um, the one that I'm, that I'm interested in right now is the CPU's quota. Um, if I hit all quotas right there, um, I'm, I see that I have a limit of 24 CPUs in basically every um, location that Google Cloud has, um, which is not enough because I want to do three masters and OpenShift three workers. And later on, I'm going to use the same project to install OpenShift container storage into, and that is going to require an additional three machines. So I'm going to up this to a significantly higher number. Um, I'm going to request, uh, uh, I think, uh, close to 80 later on. But I'll do that offline because, you know, uh, this is going to take a while anyway for Google to respond to. So um, I'll be back. So only two or three minutes later, Google was really quick in increasing my quota. So thanks for that, Google. You guys uh, probably really like me installing OpenShift on your cloud. And I can imagine that because OpenShift is awesome. Um, actual installation starts at this point. So what I'm going to do is download the installer, uh, which is uh, OK, so I'm just going to install, just download the client from uh, the Red Hat website. And this should be fairly quick. Yep, there we go. And then after this is downloaded, we're going to um, untar the installer. And there we go, I'm going to untar the installer. Yep, I'm going to throw away the readme file and uh, the uh, original tarball, just to keep things a little clean in this directory. And uh, we're going to install OpenShift. And we're going to install OpenShift in a, in a way that allows me to show you guys a little bit more about how OpenShift is actually installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an install config file, which means that I can actually customize the installation of OpenShift a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to run OpenShift install, create install config. I'm going to pass it the key um, I want to use for installing OpenShift and SSH key. So I'm going to log into the machines later on. I'm going to install on GCP. I'm going to pass the um, JSON file I downloaded earlier for my, for my service account that contains the key. So I need to make sure I specify the right file here. It's very initial. Yeah, yeah. I'll say that. Jason. Oh, I typed it right. Oh, sorry. I need to enter two empty lines. I'm waiting for nothing. There we go. Saving credentials. Yes, that's a project we created earlier. If you remember, we created OpenShift 100 things. So, yeah, I'm going to use that one. That's the only one available. And we're going to install in Europe West 4 because I'm in the Netherlands and that data center is here too. So, low latency, yay. And um, we're going to use that domain I created earlier when we set up the. Um, uh, when we set up the, the parameters in my in my Google account, in my Google account project. So there we go. The cluster name is going to be Maxim. And now I have to paste the pool secret that you can get on the Red Hat website. And this allows the installer and the, the new machines that are created on Google Cloud later on to pull um, the Red Hat um, OpenShift container images from the Red Hat registry successfully. So I'm going to paste that in right there. There we go. And now we got an install config. Clean my screen right there. We look in that um, install config file. What we see is is basically all the parameters that the OpenShift installer is going to use later on to create my cluster. For example, um, the fact that I'm going to have three masters, the fact that I'm going to have three workers. Uh, that's the other way around, um, but stim number anyway. Uh, which um, CIDR I'm going to use for my networking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, one thing I could change here, for example, is the fact that I, you know, maybe I just want to have two workers for now. I don't know. And um, one thing that you could do that I'm not going to show right now because it's um, would be a little bit, you know, out of scope for this uh, for this tutorial is between the brackets here where it says platform, you can actually change um, which machine types the installer is going to use for, for example, for your masters or for um, for your workers. So that's all stuff you can customize in here. Close this off again. We're going to deploy with two masters. 
and clean my screen before we start running the installer. And the installation just done by calling OpenShift install create cluster. If I wouldn't have a customization done in the install config file, this would have been enough. But because I've done a customization in the install config file, I need to pass one more parameter, which is dir dash dash dir period as in pointing to the current directory. This is it, I'm gonna hit enter now. This is going to take between, let's say 35 and 45 minutes. Um, obviously, I'm not going to uh, keep recording for that while. So I'm just gonna uh, hit enter, stop my recording, and I'll be back when this is done. Just popping in real quick. Um, what we can see here is that the first step of the deployment process of OpenShift was to uh, create a bootstrap resource um, together with a setup of master resources. So basically it's three master VMs and a bootstrap VM. Bootstrap VM is used while the masters are basically building themselves to, to achieve quorum before the actually three masters are up. When the three masters are up, they have quorum between the three of them. Um, so the bootstrap resource can be deleted as you can see here. And then um, we have to wait a little bit more um, to get the rest of the cluster. Again, um, we see here that it's waiting up to 20 minutes, up to 30 minutes, up to 40 minutes for certain steps to be uh, to be achieved. Um, I don't have a clock running here, but um, all in all, again, this process should take between 30 and 40 minutes in, a, in, in, base, in its entirety to, uh, to complete. And there we are, deploy completed. So what we can see here is that the, um, the whole OpenShift cluster has been deployed in slightly under half an hour, so that's not too bad, not too bad, not too bad at all. Um, we got a URL to the web console over here. I have the cube admin um, password over there. Don't bother trying to log in because by the time I post this online, this cluster is gonna be gone already, so don't bother too much about that. And I got the, um, the cube config file to uh, log in through the CLI over here. So let me just clear my terminal and um, I'll show you the cluster version and then we'll take a brief look at the UI as well. So here we are, empty console. Let me do, let me do that. So again, this is a fish shell. So in bash, this, this would have been just export cube config equals and then the path to the cube config file. Uh, fish that is a little different. I'm gonna hit enter. Um, I can run OC status right now. And it's going to give me, um, I'm logged into the project at um, api.maxim.gcp.nantonite.com. Um, I can get the cluster version from here as well. So basically just showing that this is actually, this, this is actually working. We're running an OpenShift 4.7.13. Uh, we're not progressing, meaning we're not currently updating. And um, uh, just to show you um, what an empty OpenShift cluster looks like, uh, let me just get all of the projects. I think it was like that, wasn't it? Yeah, so that's all of the projects currently available on, on this cluster. Uh, that includes the uh, OpenShift console. So basically, this is all of the, the, the stuff that is needed to get the cluster running. The OpenShift console, the OpenShift DNS uh, namespace, etcd running right there, um, QB API server running over there. Everything that ends in operator is not the actual thing. So for example here, um, the etcd operator is not actually etcd. It is the operator, so basically the management part that comes with OpenShift to manage that CD. So the operator makes sure that when we have an update for um, at CD, the operator makes sure that we can actually update at CD from version one to version two and actually perform that upgrade. So the, the whole management of OpenShift through operators is completely um, automated, which is extremely awesome um, if you ask me. So let's take a brief look at the UI. And there we are, the OpenShift UI. I can just log in right here, queue back and give it the password. And um, without very much trouble, I have a cluster running that is completely perfect and fine right now. And um, I can show you the amount of machines that are currently part of my cluster. As you can see, three masters, two workers, as I um, indicated in the install config file before we started running. And um, some things we're going to go over in the upcoming videos are how do I scale the amount of masters? How do I add a new type of master? Uh, sorry, workers, workers, both workers. So how do I scale the amount of workers? How do I add a new type of worker? Um, how do I add um, storage nodes to this cluster? I mean, we can use um, block storage from, from Google Cloud directly, but there's no way in Google Cloud right now to use 
uh, rewrite many storage on OpenShift unless we use OpenShift container storage. And we're going to look at that as well because that's important for certain use cases. And um, we'll look into many other aspects of, of OpenShift as well. Now, don't worry, there will be videos about Satellite and Ansible in the future. Um, but for now, this was uh, installing OpenShift on Google Cloud. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time. See you.